from West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Support for the following is provided by the West Virginia Department of Education and West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Hey! Hey everyone, it's Education Station! Hi, and welcome back to Education Station. I'm your host, Alex Milanese. Education Station is a show where we invite teachers from all across West Virginia to submit videos of themselves teaching their favorite lessons. In today's episode, we've got three exciting lessons about physical education, English, and zoology. So we're going to start off today's episode with some physical activity. Mr. Mullen is going to show us some fun games we can play at home. Let's check it out. My name is Mr. Mullen and I'm here in my garage and I'm a school teacher at uh, Wood County Schools and I teach at Chris Elementary School and I'm here to show you how to make some uh, different things on how to uh, do physical education at home during these times and uh, we're making a ping pong table. We made it out of plywood, just took a piece of wood and put it in the middle if you don't have anything to put a net and then underneath you can see where it has the uh, saw horses and even if you don't have the saw horses you can come over and use two identical trash cans. Just come up with your own ideas to make things. Also, cross-curriculum, if you're working on math skills, you can use a tape measure to measure the board. You can also measure the height of something, the, the, uh, the net. Also, you can do the history of ping pong, so you can use social studies. Then, uh, if you come up with your own game, like I'm gonna show you here in a few minutes, you can uh, write up the, the uh, rules and directions and the equipment you need, write sentences so you can do paragraphs so you get language arts in it. So there's all kinds of things you can do cross curriculum with what I'm going to show you here in the garage today and then outside. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hit a few ping pong balls just to show you how you can do the ping pong here. So we've got the ping pong set up. It's not, it's not regulation if you measure a regular bit, but just to do things and have fun. If you can't get out away from your house, you can go ahead and do some ping pong. So if you, if you do, uh, we have the paddles. If you don't have paddles, you can make them out of wood or something. You could use a piece of cardboard. You can use all kinds of things to hit them back and forth. So just come up with your own innovative ways. Might invent a new game that uh, we play in school when we get back in school. So we're gonna hit a few more here and then we're gonna move on to the next activity. Okay, all right, moving on. Now we're going to do some PVC pipes. Okay, one of the things is you can take a piece of PVC pipe and do a lot of stretching with it. You can stretch to the side with it. You can stretch sideways, forward. You could even fill it up. You could take a piece of PVC pipe, fill it up with sand or something, but of course then you had to put something in the end to uh, block it off, but you could use it as a weight. Uh, use even bigger PVC pipe, thicker. Uh, it just depends on your hand size. So for the, for the young, like kindergarten, this is a good size for kindergarten. And then you get a, again, you could use diameters uh, in math for different, different things cross curriculum, but you can use these for all kinds of different stretching things. You can go behind the back, all kinds of different warm up activities to use with it. Now, if you don't have a piece of PVC pipe, tell your mom or dad to save one of their old uh, brooms. You can cut off the broom part of it and use the handle. Just be careful of the splinters if you use the uh, broom. Okay, now we're gonna do one more activity using the PVC pipes. Uh, again, I don't have an actual name for this. Uh, it's just an agility drill that you could do. You, again, you could use two broomsticks. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold them up. And then on the count of three or something, you say go. And then you're just gonna to try to run and grab the stick before it hits the ground. Ready, go. Oh, missed mine. I think he pushed mine over. <laughs> Ready, one more time. Ready, go. Yeah, I'm slowing down. So you can see, you can use agility drills and things like that. You can even time yourself. You can get your phone. There's uh, different apps that you can get to uh, do sprints and things like that back and forth. So just look at some different apps that you have on your cell phone that you might do. Thanks, Mr. Mullen. Now for our next segment, Ms. DeVault is going to help us understand more about adjectives. Let's check it out. My name is Wendy DeVault and I'm here today to continue a series of videos on the eight parts of speech. So far I've done four nouns, pronouns, verbs, and adverbs. And today I would like to focus on 
adjectives. So let's take a look at this sentence here. How much further is the park from here? Now, if you didn't have the knowledge of adjectives, you may think that this sentence is correct, but it's actually not. The adjective is further, and you can't use further when you're referring to physical distance. If I can measure it in inches or yards or miles, I have to use farther. So let's change this U to an A, and that's the correct adjective to use. So what is an adjective? An adjective is a word used to describe a noun or a pronoun. Again, we talked about nouns in an earlier video. That's a person, place, thing, or idea. And then a pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun, like she, or you, or it. So let's try to find words that describe nouns and pronouns. Anna has a pink backpack. I have two nouns. I have Anna and I have backpack. Are there any words to describe either of these things? Right here, pink. Pink is an adjective, and it describes the backpack. Okay, down here. They are excited about the trip. Again, we have to look for nouns and pronouns first. They is a pronoun. Trip is a noun. Are there any words that describe they or trip? And right here, in the middle of the sentence, is excited. That is an adjective. Which word is it describing? It's not describing the trip, it's describing the pronoun they. So that's to show you in a minute we'll talk about where to place your adjectives. Well, always when you're doing parts of speech, there are questions to ask to help you identify them. These are the three for adjectives. What kind, how many, and which one? And here's an example. What kind of day is it? It's a snowy day. How many? Three steps. We have three. How many steps? Three steps. This bicycle. Which bicycle? This bicycle. And remember, if this is by itself, it's a pronoun. But when it's telling which one and there's a noun there, it becomes an adjective. So there are five things I want to point out about adjectives. In English, Adjectives usually appear in front of nouns or pronouns, usually. Mom made lemon cupcakes. Again, let's think of our words. Which one? How many? What kind? What kind of cupcakes? They were lemon cupcakes. So, as you notice, lemon comes directly in front of cupcakes. Okay, that's the adjective. This is the way it appears most of the time, but there are exceptions. However, in sentences with linking verbs, Adjectives can follow the verbs. Look at this sentence. My teacher is very cheerful. We learned in a previous video that is is a linking verb. It doesn't show action and it links something in the subject to something in the predicate. What word describes teacher? It's cheerful. That's an adjective. Teacher is your noun. But look, cheerful did not come right beside teacher. So if you think, oh, adjectives have to be directly in front of the noun or pronoun, that's not true. They can be in other parts of the sentence. The second piece of information I want to give you, the most frequently used adjectives are the words the, a, and an. And these are called articles. Let me write that down. And here are some examples. The newspaper, that's your adjective. A book. That's your adjective. And then I wanted to show you the difference between a and an. A lot of people um, don't know when to use an. And you use an in front of a vowel sound. Not in front of a vowel, a vowel sound. So artist, ah, uh, that's why it's going to be an. Egg, eh, eh, eh. So you have to have that in there, okay? Look, our. That is not a vowel. H is not a vowel. It's a consonant. But our, that's a vowel sound. So you have to have the N. So I'm going to trick you here. You've got the word unicorn. A lot of people see unicorn and they see a U. And they're like, vowel, I need an. You're wrong. Listen to unicorn. Yeah, unicorn. That's a yes sound. It's not a vowel sound. So it's A, unicorn. So again, you're not looking for vowels. You're looking for a vowel sound. Okay. The third rule I like to talk about is when sometimes you like to be descriptive. 
and you want to use several adjectives. Well, this is important for non-native English speakers. You just can't put your adjectives in any order uh, on many occasions. That's called stacking. If you want to have several adjectives, you're going to stack them. But in English, we generally do it like this. The article, which I just told you, a, an, or the, followed by size, and color, and purpose. Okay, so let's look at this example. A large purple sleeping bag. Start with the article, a, then go to size, large, then do color, purple, and then what are we using this bag for? What's its purpose? It's for sleeping, okay? Notice, you can't just put them in any order you like. And again, this is for non-native speakers. Sleeping, purple, a large bag. People would probably just like kind of wrinkle their brow and think, what are you talking about? You need to put it in this order on many occasions, okay? The fourth rule, <clears throat> when do you use a comma with adjectives? Okay, that's a big question people have. You use it when you have coordinate adjectives. I know that sounds complicated, but my tricks are really going to help you out. So you don't even have to remember this, remember my tricks. But officially in grammar, a coordinate adjectives are adjectives that don't build on each other. Okay, they stand alone, they're independent. Look at this sentence. Amy loves warm, gooey brownies. So look for your nouns. Have Amy and brownies. Are there any words describing Amy or the brownies? I see two. I see warm and gooey. So how do I know I have to have an adjective there? Look down here. If I can insert the word and right here, and it still makes sense, it still sounds normal, then I need a comma. Let's try it. Amy loves warm and gooey brownies. Makes sense. But then there's another trick, too. You can reverse the order of the adjectives, and if it still sounds normal, then use a comma. Let's try it. Amy loves gooey, warm brownies. Makes sense. That's why you need the comma. Now let's try it down here. Jason just got a new winter coat. Okay, look for your nouns and pronouns. Have Jason, have coat. Any words to describe either Jason or coat? I have new and winter. So do I need a comma here? Let's try. Jason just got a new and winter coat. That doesn't make sense. That does not sound normal. You would say new and winter coat. What about if I reverse it? Jason just got a winter new coat. Doesn't make sense, right? That means no comma. You would not. This comes, um, this is important for the ACT and SAT because they often ask you where to put commas. And the last rule before we practice. These are my pet peeves, and I had to throw them in there. Avoid confusing these pairs of adjectives. There are two. Farther and further, and this was in my example sentence. Well, how do you know when to use farther with an A or further with a U? Again, this is when you can measure it, physical distance. Further is just figurative, and you might be like, well, what does that mean, figurative? Let's look at the examples. Um, the students had further questions. You can't measure that, like get out measuring tape or odometer or something. So that's further, that's a figurative sense. Further information. Again, it can't be measured. Okay, But then, north, uh, I can measure the miles. That's farther north uh, from here, or the farther edge of my property. I can actually measure that and come up with a number. If that's the case, then you use farther. And then here's probably another one of the most misunderstood. When do you use less and when do you use fewer? You use less if the number is measured and fewer if it's counted. So I think I came up with some good examples. Less water. Yeah, you would say one water, two water, three water. So it's less. You measure water like in pints and gallons. But then if I say fewer bottles of water, I can measure the bottle, or I mean, I can count the bottles. One bottle, two bottles, three bottles. That's why this is the difference. Same thing with time. Less time, time's like a quantity. We wouldn't say one time, two time, three time, but you would say one minute, two minutes, three minutes. That's why you use less and you use fewer. And then again down here, less trouble. Okay, you wouldn't say one trouble, two trouble, but well, I was thinking, what causes trouble? Maybe arguments. Can you count arguments? You can't. One argument, two arguments, three arguments. That's the difference.
Okay, so now let's practice with five sentences. So we're looking for adjectives, and again, ask yourself the questions, what kind, how many, which ones. Our beach vacation lasted 10 days, okay? So look for nouns and pronouns. I have beach, or excuse me, I have vacation, and I have days, okay? Do any words describe the vacation, okay? And we have beach, okay? That's giving you more detail on vacation. What kind of vacation? It's a beach vacation. The word 10, how many days? 10 days, okay? So those are our two adjectives. An old explorer told us fascinating stories. So right off the bat, I want you to remember that this is called an article, so I'll just circle that. Okay, we have explorer, we have stories. Do any words describe explorer or stories? Yeah, he's an old explorer, okay? So notice here, I chose and because old is a vowel sound, okay? A would not work, it has to be an old. Then I have down here, what kind of stories? Fascinating stories. Jess is excited about the first day of school. Again, look for nouns and pronouns. I have Jess, I have school, I have day. So I have three nouns. Are any words describing Jess? I see it right here, but notice it's not in front of Jess. This is a linking verb. So excited is here, okay? Giving us more detail on Jess. And then we have day and school, okay? It's not school, this is called a prep phrase. We'll do that in the future. But which day was it? Which one? It was the first day. So first is your adjective. This is a fun one. Five greasy cheeseburgers were in a paper bag. Okay, so our nouns are cheeseburgers and bag. Do any words describe the cheeseburgers? Well, I have five, okay, how many? And then what kind? Greasy. Now my question to you is, do I need a comma? Okay, do you remember the rule? Okay, can I put and here and it makes sense? Five and greasy cheeseburgers. No, does not sound normal. Remember the other way to reverse? Greasy five cheeseburgers. No. Okay, so I do not need a comma here. Do not put a comma. And then if you look down here, I have the word bag. What kind of bag is it? It's a paper bag. And our very last sentence, oh, I almost forgot our article, A, there's that article there. Sometimes teachers tell it, they tell you to include them, like when you do lessons, other times they tell you to ignore the articles because there's so many. Just make sure you ask your teacher what she or he wants. Levi has less toys than his little brother. Okay, so we have Levi, we're looking for nouns and pronouns, toys, okay, and we have brother. So do any words describe Levi, toys, or brother? Well, the word less. So remember, this is one of those instances where people confuse it. So what do you ask yourself? Okay, can I count the toys? Do you need one toy, two toy, three? You can, so less doesn't work, okay? You have to use, do you remember? Fewer. If you can count them, one, two, three, four, it's fewer. Remember, less is measured in quantities. Okay, then you go down here. Okay, what kind of brother? It's a little brother. Okay, so let me go ahead and circle this adjective and circle there. Okay, so that's my lesson on adjectives. Thanks, Ms. DeVault. Okay, so our final stop today is with Ms. Sestito, who has a fun lesson and activity about butterflies. Let's check it out. joining me, Mrs. Stito, at Critter's Corner. Today, my critter, Pookie, is going to join us in a read aloud, Butterflies by Mustard Seed Books. A butterfly is an insect. It has six legs and four wings. 
A butterfly's body has three parts, the head, thorax, and abdomen. The abdomen helps a butterfly eat, breathe, and make babies. The thorax is where the legs and wings are attached. A butterfly's head has a mouth, two eyes, and two antenna. Butterflies use their antenna to smell. A butterfly has a long tube for a mouth that works just like a straw. It helps the butterfly drink nectar from inside flowers. A mother butterfly lays her eggs on plants. She chooses plants that her babies can eat for food. Butterfly eggs only take a few days or weeks to hatch. Ba baby caterpillars are tiny when they are first born. Caterpillars do nothing but eat and grow. Some grow to full size within a week. Others can take up to a year. When the caterpillar reaches full size, it finds a safe place and attaches itself to a branch. Its skin comes off and under the old skin is a new hard skin called a chrysalis. Inside the chrysalis, the caterpillar is turning into a butterfly. Sometimes this can take, takes a week, but it can take up to eight months. The caterpillar has changed into a butterfly. It is ready to fly away, lay more eggs, and start the cycle all over again. Here we see different pictures of butterflies. They come in many different colors to blend in with the environment. We also see the life cycle of the butterfly, the egg, chrysalis, I'm sorry, the egg, caterpillar, then the chrysalis. Now let's answer some butterfly questions. How many legs does a butterfly have? Four legs, eight legs, or six legs? A butterfly has six legs. How many wings does a butterfly have? Four wings, two wings, or eight wings? A butterfly has four wings. What are the three parts of a butterfly's body? Wings, legs, antenna, head, thorax, abdomen, or head, shoulders, knees? Head, thorax, and abdomen. What do butterflies use their antennas for? To smell, to hear, or to see? They use their antennas to smell. Where does a mother butterfly lay her eggs? In the ground, in a nest, or on plants? A mother butterfly lays her eggs on plants. True or false, baby caterpillars are small when they are born. True. What happens inside a chrysalis? 
caterpillars turn into a butterfly. Caterpillars lay eggs or caterpillar sleeps. Caterpillar turns into a butterfly. Now it's time for our butterfly craft. Items we need for our butterfly craft. Wax, paper, glue, a black marker, scissors, a sponge brush, and colorful tissue paper. The first thing you're going to do is cut out a large piece of wax paper. Then you are going to draw the butterfly pattern on the wax paper. Now we are going to put glue inside the pattern. Using the sponge brush, we're going to spread out the glue. Then we'll pick different colors and put them all throughout the butterfly outline. If the glue starts to dry, just add more glue. Once you've filled in your butterfly with all of the tissue paper, allow the glue to dry. When it's finished drying, you're going to take your marker and draw a picture of the butterfly's body. Then you will cut out your butterfly. You can pick any spot in your house to hang your butterfly. Thank you for joining me, Miss Sestito, at Curtis Corner. Thanks, Miss Sestito. All right, well, that wraps up everything for us here today on Education Station. We want to thank everyone who shared their awesome lessons, and we want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Education Station.